Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eogan Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, July 31st, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading today from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 31 through 34, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. Brethren, if we judged ourselves truly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together to be condemned. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. Now concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were heathen, you were led astray to dumb idols. However, you may have been moved. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. Let us be attentive. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened round his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come but woe to the man by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the Gehenna of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So today's Gospel reading has some very pointed cautionary messages for the ears of the disciples, but also in our own hearing, because our Lord is comparing the kingdom of heaven to children. We, in this day and age, like to be very sophisticated. We like complicated things. We like movies that keep our attention and send us in all sorts of different directions so that we try to figure out what's happening. We like complicated books. Even our computers and our phones are complicated. Well, interestingly enough, the Church Fathers speak of the difference between humanity and God, and humanity is indeed very complicated and subject to change all the time. However, God is actually utterly simple and completely not changing from beginning to end. Our perceptions of God change, but that's because we change. The sun, just because we're looking at the sun in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, and then looking at the sun in Miami, Florida, even though our perspective has changed, its positioning in the sky has changed, that doesn't mean the sun has changed. God, and likewise, remains completely and utterly unchangeable. Now, simple means unchangeable. But another way to look at simple is children. Children have specific needs, and they also have those needs in a way that requires someone else to help them. 
And so our Lord is looking at children as the ones that recognize their humility, recognize their need, pursue with gentleness and meekness, and as a result, they take on the form of those who are in heaven already. So, what our Lord is conveying is, perhaps we make things too complicated. Perhaps our connivings, our contortions, perhaps these things are just a little bit overly complicated. And maybe things need to be simplified. Take, for example, the complaint of Martha when talking with Jesus about Mary, her sister. That Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet while Martha has many things to attend to. Jesus gently chides her and says that Martha is troubled about many things, but only one thing is truly needful. And that's a message for us, too. Even in this day and in this age, what is absolutely necessary? Now, I would hope that the answer would be a proper and holy and healthy connection between us and God. Because let's be honest, there's really nothing more important than that. And so if we live our lives understanding that that connection is the most important, then maybe some of the more complicated things in our lives will go away. Okay, so more with the gospel today. He warns against someone that would cause a child to sin. If that person causes a child to sin, it would be better for him to have a very heavy weight, a millstone. A millstone is a great stone, a circular stone that grinds mill into flour. He better have a millstone fastened around his neck and be thrown into the depths of the sea. Goodness. And of course, the matters of temptations, because the world is saturated with them. All sorts of things to distract and to delay and to drive us away from the things that truly matter. What does our Lord say about that? If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, he says, throw it away. It is better for you to enter life, the heavenly kingdom, maimed than to be thrown into the fire. And if your eyes cause you to sin, puck it out or them out and throw them away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the Gehenna of fire. And then again, this admonition about the children. See that you do not spies one of these little ones, the children. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. Angels are always in the presence of God who is in heaven. Be respectful, decent to children. Do not hurt them and certainly do not cause them to sin. This is the great challenge that our Lord has spoken to us even in this day. For, our Lord says, the Son of Man came to save the lost. Without someone to guide them, children are lost. Without someone to guide us, honestly, we're lost too. And so we pray that God will continue to strengthen us and to guide us into a way that is holy and healthy for us and for everyone. And when we are able to do that, then we shall see God clearly and shall be reunited with him in his heavenly kingdom. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to this YouTube channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section below. And if you like, share this video with your friends. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.